Now I wanted to share with you, uh, uh, literally just got out of the woods uh, a little bit ago, I had a really nice sit this morning, and it's not November 1st yet, and um, what is it, October 30th? And so we're really getting into the uh, end of the pre-rut. Bucks are really getting ruddy. But I wanted to share with you, you know, a lot of people say, where, where are your hunts? You know, what do you, what do you see when you're out in the stand? Um, where can I find your hunts? And I always roll them into a strategy. And, and this will be too, you know, proven pre-rut strategy. And um, I wanted to share some of the success we had. Uh, it's been a great pre-rut. According to Dylan, I should have shot at least one of the bucks <laughs> that I passed up. And, and I'm, I might regret these later, but I've been having, I've had a really good opportunity to look at several of our four-year-olds in the area, um, one of them multiple times, and, uh, and really get an inventory of what bucks are out there, check the trail cameras, you know, kind of keep an active eye because I'm not doing this in early October and mid-October and September going up in the land and checking out my tree stands, checking out the mock scrapes that are by the stands. We've got some great mock scrape footage of bucks coming in and bucks going by, walking by, the four-year-olds, and it's been a great success story. And I'll get to that towards the end and we'll show you a lot of that footage towards the end. But I wanted to talk about what makes this work. You know, this time of the year, and I look at it from in Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, New York, Pennsylvania, and that line right there, northern Indiana, northern Illinois, maybe northern Iowa, certainly over into northern Ohio. This is that time, that last 10 days of October, where when it's cold, which it's been cold nearly every day this, this uh, 10 days, these last 10 days of October, the deer are active and they move. You know, if it's 80 degrees, 70 degrees, they don't move. And I don't like to move when it's 80 degrees either. I don't think deer are that much different. They get hot. That's why we don't see water hole use uh, really pick up until the bucks are really cruising because they get thirsty. They feed on green vegetation all night. They don't need to take a drink. I saw a commercial the other day talking about water and how deer need to drink. It's a well-known fact they need to take a drink every day. Well, yeah, they need to take a drink of water every day, but a lot of those drinks and all their drinks mostly come from green vegetation. So they don't actually need to take a drink of water. And, uh, but when they do and when they're rutting, they get hot and they take a drink of water. And I believe when they get hot, they sit down. And so these last 10 days of October, we're really watching the weather, managing our sits. So the weather plays a big critical factor. We're not hunting on those hot, high windy days. We're just not seeing the deer. Another thing, we're putting a huge priority on morning hunts. In fact, the last three days, I'm not hunting the evening tonight. I'm not, I didn't hunt the evening yesterday and the evening before. Huge priority on mornings. Uh, today, I was able to pass on a mature buck that uh, I might regret later in the season. And uh, I'm not one of those that believes don't, don't pass on something the first day that you, you, know, you want to shoot later or whatever. I look at that's no different than you love venison and you can't wait to shoot some, you know, shoot some venison. You want to bring it home to your family. So when you go out the first day, do you shoot a fawn? Or do you shoot a young young doe just because you're looking at it like, I just want to shoot some venison? No, those first, second, third day, let's say you had 10 days to hunt, you're gonna look for a big mother doe or a big buck so you can take the most venison home to your family. Why waste it on a fawn? But boy, when it gets later in the season and that year and a half old doe comes by and it's the ninth day of your last, you know, the second to the last day of your hunt, you might shoot that yearling doe that you didn't pass up the first, that you passed up the first day because you want some meat. It's the same with me, I want to see the older bucks. I want to shoot a five-year-old right now. I want to shoot one of the five-year-olds or six-year-olds that we have on a couple of the properties that are in the area. They are more like ghosts. They are a different buck than a, a four-year-old. A four-year-old is a huge, vastly different buck than a three-year-old. I believe watching these deer helps me learn. You can never learn enough as a hunter. I continue to learn, and that's why I love watching these deer. I told Dylan on the way over here, man, I should have shot a couple of those, maybe. But man, I love watching them. And the one I got this, this morning, I got to watch him three different times. Um, really cool buck. So priority on morning, I want to see as many bucks as possible. In the evening, I'm not hunting an evening stand, despite a morning stand that I could be sitting in the next day or the next day after that that I have planned. I try to plan my sits, so I'm looking ahead and saying, boy, I can't wait to sit this on the 24th. This is a perfect weather day for XYZ stand, and I go in and hunt it. Just because I have a favorite stand, at this time of the year during the pre-rut does not mean I hunt it. My favorite stand from last year that I shot two bucks out of in two sits, I have not hunted yet this year, and it's almost November 1st. I can't wait to hunt that, but I want good rutting conditions, and I want east to southeast winds. I will get that in the next five days, but right now I haven't had those conditions where I felt I wanted to go in and hunt that stand because the first stand in, first time into that stand is always the best, seems like, and so, 
that's how we've learned to manage our ruts. And, and then at the same time, if there's multiple people hunting the property, don't feel bad to take an evening off, let someone else, maybe go sit with that person. I've enjoyed sitting with Diane about seven or eight times, probably more than she enjoys me sitting with her. So I, I enjoy sitting with Diane. I love sitting out with her and watching and trying to help her. But you know, the last person to teach her hunting would probably be me that she wants, but uh, we, we have fun together. So we're really practicing low impact. Again, like I preach all the time, using the weather and we're rotating our sands and for that, even going back to October 14th, when we had the first frost of the year, I've been able to pass on some beautiful bucks. There's a nice four-year-old eight point in that morning. I had another buck last Saturday. I can't even think of the dates right now. My head's foggy, even getting up in the morning here and there, not getting much sleep. It's 33 minute walk up the hill to my stands when I get up top or 35 right around there. You almost tend to get a little burned out and that's where uh, less is more. Had a beautiful, eight point go by on Saturday. He's actually a nine point, but he broke a brow tine. He's got huge G2s and G3s, a beautiful four year old. He's spitting out steam in the frosty air on Saturday, Saturday morning. Later on Saturday morning, I saw the split brow buck, which is my target buck. It's just some brief footage of him chasing a doe up a hill. He was actually tending that doe for about 10 minutes. I thought they were gonna come towards me. I was shaking 10 minutes after, and that was awesome. I saw that four year old, I was shaking. But when I saw the split brow buck, I literally was shaking after and I was shaking telling anybody after that I talked to about the split brow, brow buck. He went up to a bedding area up top. I thought for the evening sit, what I had an opportunity to do was to go all the way up on the back side of the bedding and wait for him. Hopefully he didn't come where I was at in the morning, in and out of that bedding. He came from that side and that's from the top right there. They loop around. So I thought, man, he might come out that same opposite way that he might have gone in in the morning and sure enough right before dark here deer coming through the woods the thick stuff and here comes the split brow buck i don't have footage of it once i realized that it was a split brow he was in my opening i followed him through the opening had my bow ready he stopped behind some trees a couple more steps he was into the opening and i didn't want to turn the camera on i didn't want to touch the camera he did what a lot of mature bucks do. He might have known something was up. I really don't know. He didn't act like it, but a lot of times they don't. He's a six-year-old buck. He just turned and walked away. And he walked away slowly. And he kind of continued the way he was going. And uh, to see him twice in the same day was very rewarding. And I've had some great sits in between. And then this morning, got to see the big one, that big one that I passed last Saturday. Got to see another buck chasing does out in the field, hearing the grunts. And uh, I'm trying to capture footage when I'm by myself. And uh, when Dylan's with me, he gets everything and he gets it in focus. When it's just me, I don't get everything and I don't get everything in focus. And so, but I believe you can navigate the pre-rut. We've had a very successful pre-rut, even though no shots are, have been fired. I did pull my bow back the other day on Whitey. Whitey is an eight year old buck. He's got one big brow tine. I got some decent footage of him. He came in. I didn't know which one it was. He stopped behind some trees and then he went back out into the field. And had I known which one he was to begin with and heard him, they sneak in, you know, like they do. He stood and surveyed that field for two minutes. And what they're doing is just looking for does. And that's why I love this time of year. I used a, um, a bleat call this morning. I thought it was an, another buck, but I ended up calling a buck up as a three-year-old eight point. I thought he was a different one that I might have shot, and, um, but he came right to that bleat. And they're just searching um, where Diane's been hunting out in the open fields. We'll see some of the mature bucks off in the background and they'll just stand and survey. And they'll look over 10, 12, 15 acres at a time looking for a doe. And they'll just stand back there and then they'll leave, go back in the woods. We'll see them come back out again. And sure enough, when there's a doe there, you'll watch them going down to that doe, almost stalking her and really sneaking up through her through the goldenrod and then jumping out on her running her. It's pretty cool. Diane loves watching it. She, she thinks they're sneaking up on them and stalking them and she thinks it's pretty crazy what they're doing and it's fun to watch. And, uh, and that's what Whitey was doing the other morning. Kind of cool thing, the first picture I had of Whitey was in 2015 and I saw him once on a property a half mile away when I was sitting with Diane. He looked beautiful. I think he was at his prime then when he was probably six and uh, uh, five or six right around there. And then this year his antlers are a little bit smaller, but they are thick, his body is huge. And where I got that picture in 2015, where the camera was at, where he got his photo, he was 30 to 40 yards from that when I just saw him right now, 
five years later, five seasons later. So isn't that cool? And it's crazy how those older bucks have that home range. And what I find is that the older they are and the more you watch in those older bucks, even if they're four or five years old, then they get really defined in their home core range. They become a lot more patternable, but they're a lot harder to kill because they have zero tolerance for any type of hunting pressure. Something interesting, Diane's been watching this buck on the land she hunts. She calls it Diane's land or her land, but his name's Tower. He's a three-year-old is what we think. And um, crazy, but Dylan and I were in the stand three quarters of a mile away watching him on another property as he went by in the morning on our other property. And, uh, and we have scrapes of him up bottom and top um, making scrapes. And then he's back on Diane's land uh, yesterday morning at 7.40 in the morning. We got a cell cam picture of him. So pretty cool three-year-olds sometimes when you have older bucks they're the hardest bucks to pattern because they just don't have their spot yet those four-year-olds whip their butts and push them around let alone the five and six-year-olds that are locked into a place they just don't have their place yet we've been able to enjoy the pre-rut i believe we've learned a lot more about deer, deer behavior i've loved watching the cruising aspects of those four-year-olds how their cruising edge the cruising terrain change and they're consistent at it and they're patternable we've had a great successful rut by laying off our stands, by hunting the weather, hunting the cold mornings, giving up a lot of evening sits. And I hope you enjoy the footage. We've enjoyed it in person. I hope you enjoy it on the big screen. And this has been a classic pre-rut. We've had a lot of success. And I hope some of the things and some of the strategies that I've employed over the last 10 days will help you in the future and throughout even some of those same strategies applying it to this year's annual whitetail rut.